Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Oh, our God is good. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just all the time. I'll say that every time. Hallelujah. He's the Holy One of Israel. He's the one who has redeemed us. Hallelujah. And He is the one that continues to sanctify us and to bring us along the way. We need not fear what the enemy is doing out in the world. Okay. What we need to be concerned about is being uh, focused upon the Lord and be uh, true to His Word. Hallelujah. True to what He has laid down in our hearts and in the Word of God, the principles therein. He's given us all the instruction we need right there. And when He speaks to our heart, it will not violate the principles that He laid down in the Bible. Hallelujah. That are laid down in the Holy Scriptures. It will not violate that. It will not go contrary to that. It will line up with that, hallelujah, so that we can know that we are hearing, hallelujah, the right spirit, the only true and living spirit, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the spirit of Christ, hallelujah, within us. Glory to God. In Galatians chapter 5, I'm going to read there. Heavenly Father, I praise you right now and thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for the, the Holy Spirit, Father, that you sent to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, through your Son. Oh, glory to your holy name, Lord. And in the precious blood of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to seal this word into our hearts, O God, and that you bring forth through this unworthy mouth, Lord, what you want to speak. Hallelujah, hallelujah, to your people, to bring them, Lord, along the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I bless you, Father, and thank you for all that you are doing this day, and I praise you and glorify your holy name. For all the testings and all the trials, we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you, Lord, because you are perfecting your saints in the fire. Hallelujah. You are perfecting us. Hallelujah. You are fashioning your dear Son in us, Lord. You are breaking through all the muck and the mire of the, of the flesh, and you are transforming our souls, Lord. You are doing the work. Hallelujah. We bless you and praise you. I pray, Lord, that you keep us all submitting to you, Lord. Submitting to you. Resisting the devil and watching the devil flee. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Paul's talking, starting at verse 14. And we, we're real familiar with this. Uh, if you're a babe in Christ, maybe you're not so familiar with it. But it says in verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, I could spend a whole hour just on that one verse, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants, to, wants us to zero in on something. He wants to show you something today, and me, hallelujah. Uh, but the Bible says that God has written His law in our heart, hallelujah. So that law that's written in our heart can be fulfilled, is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself hallelujah hallelujah and then he says but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed one of another we're not to bite and devour one another you know when you're rebuking people and you know that your brother or someone you see that you know is in sin or you know they're being led astray you know you have to go to them you have to sometimes be a little harsh with them you have to be uh, very firm with people and you share with them the truth of what God's Word says, and you show them their error, and if they don't receive it, you know, you have to just back off. You have to back off and pray. You have to say, okay, Lord, touch them. I've given them the Word you wanted me to give them, and now, Lord, I pray you touch them. Touch them, Lord. Because if you don't, it gets into this big biting back and forth, back and forth thing, and then you can be consumed one of another, and we don't want that, okay? So if you see someone that needs an admonition or a reproof or a rebuke, just give them the rebuke in love and you know the truth is the truth okay and if you don't receive the truth you don't receive life it's just that simple so if you're giving the truth to someone or someone's giving it to you and you don't receive the truth you're just rejecting life you're rejecting the truth you're rejecting life okay that's all there is to it and you want to stay in your uh, death because basically uh, sin and deceit and lies, that's death. Okay? So, be careful. Okay? When someone speaks the truth to you and you know and it's cutting you to the heart, the Holy Spirit's convicting you, you know. 
okay, what they're saying is true, it's backed up by the word of the Lord, then you need to receive it. Hallelujah. Okay, all of us do. Hallelujah. Verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. If we're walking in the Spirit. Now, when you read Galatians chapter 5 here, talking about the, the, the flesh and the Spirit, you, you, you can go over to Galatians, I mean to Romans chapter 7 and 8, and this ties in real well with that. Paul's talking about the law of the Spirit as opposed to walking by the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus as opposed to uh, being overcome and being uh, led, led forth by the old nature, which is the law of sin and death. Okay. Verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. You're not under that law of sin and death. Okay? You're not under that law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Now, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Now, this is the old nature. This is the nature that we were all born with, that we inherited from our fathers. Okay? It's the sin nature. It's the self nature. All right? And, and here it is. Here's the works of the flesh. Okay? Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. They manifest. You see them. Okay? Which are these? Adultery. Adultery. Now, when we hear that word adultery, what do we think about? We think about a woman going and sleeping with another man other than her husband. Or we think about a man going and being with a woman that's not his wife or another man's wife. Okay? You see what I'm saying? That is what we think about. But God says there's another side to it. Because you can be worshiping yourself. You can be... Uh, you can be committing adultery against the Lord Jesus Christ that saved you, okay? He came and lived inside of you. But you can be worshiping yourself. You can be having intimacy with yourself more than you are with Him. And you're telling Him, No, Lord, I'm not going to do that. See? And, and we do it in subtle ways. We don't want to do that. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important. That he comes in and He checks us. He says, no, don't do that. Don't do that. So adultery, it, it's worshiping other gods. Judah, if you read the book of Jeremiah, verse 5, 6, 7, 8 chapters, you, you see that Judah was committing adultery against the Holy One of Israel by worshiping other gods. Okay? And it was the imaginations of their heart. They were worshiping their self. They were committing adultery. Okay? So it's not just a physical thing. Okay? There's so much adultery in the church today. It's all over. It's rampant. Okay? And people know it's going on, but nobody says nothing. Okay? Nobody says nothing. People love a soap opera mentality. They love to live in a world, a fantasy world of soap opera. But God sees it all, and it's real, and God's judging it today. Hallelujah. And He's going to judge it even more. Okay, adultery, fornication, fornication, fornicating with other gods. See? Or two people sleeping together, a man and a woman, or a man and a man, that's abomination. Okay? Or a woman and a woman, that's abomination. That's fornication. Fornication. That that word fornication is is uh adultery, incest, figuratively, idolatry. See, it's idolatry, worshiping yourself. See? Fornication. Uncleanness. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, idolatry. Oh, praise God. Worshiping other gods, worshiping yourself. Witchcraft. That word witchcraft there, people think of an old woman standing by a pot making potions and, and doing this. And, and it, it, it does mean that in a way because they were mixing herbs and things. But it's pharmakia. Okay? It's where we get the word pharmacy from. All the whole pharmaceutical industry, it's all witchcraft. It's all control. It's, it's mind control upon the people. And, and witchcraft is anything to manipulate other people to get them to do what you want, your will to be done. That's why we, take, we say, when you pray for your brothers and your sisters, 
when you pray for this ministry, pray that we stay close to Christ. Pray that we stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that we be obedient to His will. Pray that we love Him and serve Him all the days of our lives, see? And that's what we pray for you. We pray God touch you and God bless you and God keep you and God prosper you in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And even prosper you in the natural realm. Hallelujah. That you will have a deep hunger for His Word. See, these are good prayers that, that are according to the Scripture that are according to the Lord's will, hallelujah, that you rejoice evermore, hallelujah, that you pray without ceasing, hallelujah. We need to be obedient to God's word, hallelujah. Don't, don't pray that people will do things that you want them to do. Pray that God will have His way with His church, hallelujah. Another work of the flesh, hatred, that's murder. Variance, showing favoritism, variance. Emulations, okay. Emulations. Let me look that one up. Emulations. Heat, that is, figuratively, zeal. Okay, it's, it's like jealousy. Okay, emulations. Looking at the other person going, oh, you know, they, they get all the good things. Or they, you know, that's, this is a work of the flesh. This is, it, it ties in with covetousness. Wrath. Okay, wrath is, is a work of the flesh. And that's, that's passion. That's like a, a fiercest indignation. Wrath. That's an unholy anger, wrath, strife, okay, intrigue, faction, trying to see how can I trip that person up, or oh, that person makes me so mad, that's strife, you know, you have it in your heart, see, these are things in the heart, and they manifest in the natural, okay, seditions, seditions, disunion, dissension, division, sedition, okay, now, what causes that, what causes that is that people don't want to believe the truth, they don't want to follow the truth. They want to do what they want to do. They want to have their own little uh, circle of people around them that will agree with them, okay? Now, I don't care who's around us. I care that you agree with the truth, okay? See, the Bible really doesn't need to be interpreted. It needs to be believed. It needs to be understood and believed. Hallelujah. See? Because when we understand what the Holy Spirit is saying, then when He speaks in our heart, we will remember, hallelujah, yeah, that's what He said in His Word, hallelujah. Seditions. Seditions come in when people do not hold to the truth, okay? So the one who's holding to the truth is the one who's walking in the Spirit, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. The one who's not walking in the truth, they don't hold to the truth, they're not walking by the Spirit of the Lord, they're walking by their own Spirit. They're walking by the devil's Spirit. They're walking by the Spirit of the world and the Spirit of the age. Okay? Heresies. Here's heresies. That's uh, a choice. Okay? A party or abstractly disunion. Heresy. Okay? It, it's a sect. Heresy. And, and that's what these cults are on YouTube. That's what these cults are in the world. Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Mormonism, uh, Seventh-day Adventism, all these different cults. that they, they, they have a cult mentality. That's why we caution people. We, we tell the young sheep, be careful about going into some of these churches and becoming members of, of these churches because they will make you just like themselves. See, that's an organization of man. Okay? The life of Christ is in the Spirit. Freedom in the Spirit to go and do as Christ tells you to do. Hallelujah. See? But the church will, will tell you, oh, this is what God wants you to do. And you have to be like us. And, and they'll give you little things to do here and there, you know. But you're always over. There's someone always over you. And when Jesus wants to break out of you and Jesus wants to work through you in a mighty way, they want to quench that. They don't want that to happen. One time... We preached at a little church. We went to a little church in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And it was a little black church. We had met this lady and her mom and dad had this little church. And we went there. And she, the lady wasn't there, but her mom and dad were there. And Sharon got up and shared a word that the Lord had given her on faith. And and it was just like a five... She spoke for five minutes. It was very short. And, and then the lady looked at me and said, You got something to share? And I said, I sure do. And I got up and preached. And I, I preached for about three or four hours. It was just a beautiful... The Holy Spirit came down. It was awesome. And, and we got to pray for everybody. And, 
and it was just a wonderful service and we went back Wednesday night and, and preached again but then the next Sunday they shut it down religion will shut down the true spirit of Jesus Christ because they have no control you cannot control the Holy Spirit he will leave okay he will leave you can't control him hallelujah so heresies and seditions come in because people do not hold to the truth and they want to have it their own way not the way that the Lord has revealed to us by his scripture and by the Holy Ghost hallelujah envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God Okay, but the fruit of the spirit hallelujah the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. There's no law against us walking by the fruit of the Spirit and exercising and letting all that fruit, okay? It's one fruit, all these things together, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. See? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, in this battle that we are in, the battle is against the flesh. You are battling against your old nature. Your spirit man is battling your old nature. This is the battle. Okay? You read Galatians 5 from verse 14 on to the end of the chapter and you'll see this is the battle. Now in, in Matthew chapter 11 now we know Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is within us. Okay? And in Matthew 11 Jesus is speaking and they're talking about uh, John the Baptist here and Jesus said in verse number 11 7 it says and as they departed Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John what went ye out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment behold they that wear soft clothing are in kings houses see oh yeah those that wear soft clothing they're in kings houses kings of this earth hallelujah John he wore camel's hair hallelujah he was in the kingdom of God glory to God that just totally opposite isn't it of man's kingdom that's totally opposite of the church of today isn't it huh you go to you go to some of these mega churches or go to some of these churches today dressed like John the Baptist they won't let you in the door see they wouldn't let you in the door they tell you to go take a bath and to go do something they, they don't want you around them but yet John the Baptist, who was what? Jesus said he was greater, but yet least in the kingdom of heaven, see. He was the greatest prophet up to that time, John the Baptist was. Hallelujah. And after John got his head chopped off, Jesus, hallelujah, he was fully prophesying and he was fully doing his apostolic work. Hallelujah. Praise God. He was doing it before John got his head chopped off, but hallelujah. Jesus said, but what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Oh, hallelujah. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, this is the verse right here, verse 12, until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. See, you're, the kingdom of heaven within us suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Now, today, what does that mean? That means we battle against the flesh. Hallelujah. And the way we get the victory is by faith. Hallelujah. We believe. We submit to the Father. We resist the devil. We resist the temptations that come our way. 
and we watch the devil flee and we walk in victory day by day day by day against the works of the flesh hallelujah hallelujah now people they people are trained they're trained they're programmed by the television TV television programming okay and they have been for the last hundred years really heavy duty the programming okay with radio radio came out in like the 1920s uh, and then the television was invented in 1928 came out real strong after World War II uh, but they have programmed the people that if someone raises their voice they are an angry person that's a lie that is a lie see that's a lie many of you have bought into that lie so you instantly pull a, put a wall of if someone's raising their voice but that's to your detriment hallelujah because you don't want to receive the truth but the kingdom of heaven suffers violence see do you think the devil and his people out in the world are do you think they treat our brothers and sisters in other lands with kid gloves you know no when they arrest them they use cattle prods on them okay no they have all sorts all sorts of forms of torture violence against the brethren that are our brothers and sisters and then when we preach the truth and we raise our voice with the truth, we sound the trumpet that God's people in the West and other places are steeped in sin and filth inside their heart. Okay? They're covetous. They're prideful. They're arrogant. And they need to repent and believe the gospel. They need to repent and say, Lord, take this junk out of me. They play favoritism. One says, I'm of Paul. One says, I'm of Apollos. I'm of Peter. And this ought not to be. We have to be side by side. We have to submit ourselves one to another in the fear of God. As it says in, in, in Ephesians chapter 5. See, there's a violent battle raging. It was so violent, so violent. Jesus Christ, our Savior, He told the apostles, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. And He went into the garden. Okay? And he was praying. And an angel of God was sent to him from the Father to strengthen him. And after he received the strength, then it says he was in an agony. And he was sweating, as it were, great drops of blood for you and for me. For all of us. For my wife. For your wife, sir. For your husband, ma'am. For your children. For everyone you see walking around the streets, if you live in New York City or L.A. or San Francisco or wherever you live, He did it for all of us, for all mankind. He was battling. And He won the victory in the garden. And He was able at that point to go to the cross. But He had to battle. And the Bible says we've not yet uh, resisted unto blood striving against sin and, and it says in Hebrews 12 see we have to step to the plate and do more warfare more battle in the spirit realm hallelujah because that's where the battle takes place and the kingdom of heaven is within us and the violent take it by force hallelujah let us not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Let us go forward because the devil wants to put us down. But I don't care what the devil wants. I want what God wants. And God wants us to stand on our two feet and raise our heads high and say, Almighty God, you are the king, hallelujah, wherever we go. And don't worry about what the world says. We don't need the Constitution of the United States. We don't need nothing that this world has to offer. We need Jesus Christ more in our life, more evident coming forth out of us. So let us pray. Father, we pray right now that you would forgive the sins of your church, Lord. All the sins of selfishness, pride, arrogance, covetousness, jealousies. Oh God, that you would forgive all the hatred and all the murder and unforgiveness. 
in the hearts of your children, Lord. Hallelujah today. That you would bring conviction to the hearts of your people, Lord. And that you would help us, Lord. And that you would raise up that mighty army even more, Lord. That we would battle in the Spirit, Lord. That we would battle in the Spirit on our knees. On our knees in our heart, Lord. That we would humble ourselves before you. And say, yes, Lord, do the work that needs to be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.